and welcome back to Little Spy Lyra. Today we're gonna make a black cat apothecary sign, and here's our inspiration. Lyra Bulltalk Pistol Bloodstone. To begin, you're going to want a pick your poison sign from the Dollar Tree. It's the one that has the potion bottles hanging from it. You will also want one of their longer signs. Mine was from this summer. I just flipped it over and used the back. And you're going to want to get one of these wooden cat cutouts. Now, I'd like to begin, of course, by saying it is an allergy day. I apologize for any sniffling you may hear. Also, the cats are out and about in the house, and so they're talkative. Surprise, surprise, they want to be part of the video. They're jealous that Lara got to be the focus. And... This project was a labor of love. Can I just say, uh, I have never worked on a project that gave me so many problems in so many different aspects. So I'm glad to present it to you. I think eventually it turned out really cute. But yeah, there was a lot of head shaking and uh, I don't even want to look at this anymore moments going on. Once you get all your hanging tags and uh, strings removed, go ahead and flip that cat sign over and remove the pumpkin from the front. I used one of the Dollar Tree Cricut spatulas and they're kind of flimsy, so I would recommend using a putty knife. Just saying. I took a little Dollar Tree spackling when I was done and I filled in any holes left by the hanging strings and I filled in the little holes where the staples were on the back of the sign. Of course, before I put the putty on there, I did a light sanding just to make sure that everything would be nice and flush when I was ready to go. Once everything was dried, I took my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and went over everything to remove the excess spackling. Also, I'm going to be painting on the front of the potion bottles, so I gave them a quick sand and a wipe down with a baby wipe so that my paint would have an easier time adhering itself to the paint bottles. Now, I took a little uh, applesauce cup and mixed together burnt umber and limeade both of them are apple barrel acrylic paints to coat the front of my first uh, potion bottle. Next, I took some of this uh, territorial beige, I think it is. Yep, territorial beige and painted my next potion bottle. And the last colors I'm going to do are mix up some bright yellow and burnt umber. Again, all of these are by Apple Barrel and made a yellowy greenish color with it. In the light, it's a bit more yellow, but it definitely has a green tw twinge to it, tinge to it. That, that T word that apparently I can't say today. Next, I took some jet black apple barrel acrylic paint and I gave my cat a nice thick coat, front, back, and sides. And then I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and gave the back of my sign a nice even coat not full coverage because I want this to look a little bit aged, but I painted it. After giving each of my signs a nice coat or two or potentially three depending on the color, I took some antique parchment and a little bit of that territorial beige and mixed it up until I found a cork color that was pleasing to my eyes. Um, my mom has a really cool uh, tutorial that I'm going to share with you, eventually uh, making a jumbo cork. 
and the paint colors she uses are obviously way more intense because it looks just like a real cork, but this is just to give the idea. Once the uh, cork color dries, I take a stiff bristle brush, one of the Dollar Tree uh, edging brushes, which the name uh, apparently has fallen out of my head right now, and another paintbrush. I dip some of it into the burnt umber and I do a little splatter painting effect. Rather than taping it off, I just used an old piece of cardboard that you saw earlier in the video. I was just using as something to paint on to cover up and get a nice flat straight line. Hey lads and lassies, do you like what you're seeing? Would you like to see more? Well then, hit that like button and subscribe, of course. Remember to ring the bell and share and comment too if you know someone who will enjoy it. Thank you so much. So I'm not sure what happened. I think my camera turned itself on. I missed the footage of gluing the cat to the left-hand side of the sign so glue the cat on and then i'm taking some hot glue and i am gluing the potion bottles on to the right side and you can put them in any combination you like oh as always make this yours change the colors if you want you don't have to do exactly what i'm doing again my footage got lost my camera kept shutting off for some reason i don't know why um, I just paint, glued, hot glued some craft paper to the back of my sign so that it would be nice and finished. I found the center of my sign. It came to 11.75 inches and glued a bit of twine to the back for a hanging string and then took a little scrap of the leftover craft paper, hot glued over top of that to make sure that the hanging string wasn't going anywhere. Here you'll see I have a pack of graphite paper and I'm just going to take it, make sure that it's on the correct side, tape it to my board and then tape Black Cat Apothecary to the back of that and trace over it. When I said this project was a labor of love, let's see, I had to uh, print off something that would look good for the black cat apothecary sign and my printer decided to jam. I cleared the jam but it's not recognizing that the jam is cleared so I had to figure out another way. Since my handwriting is not super amazing I found a Dollar Tree stencil that had the alphabet on it and stenciled onto a piece of paper and said wow that looks really nice. I will just use that and trace that onto my sign. In retrospect, I wish I would have traced the stencil directly onto the board because while filming this the first time, uh, my lettering got askew and I ended up putting the top half of Apothecary over the bottom half of Black Cat. So took that off, tried to erase the graphite pencil, and lo and behold, it didn't want to erase. So I just had to repaint it white again and wait for that to dry before I could do all the things. Let me just tell you, not my favoritest moment ever or collection of moments. Here you see I'm taking a thin liner brush and with some more jet black paint from Apple Barrel, I am going to go ahead and outline all my lettering. 
when I have all the outlining finished, then I will just fill in all my letters. Now, when we cut to the finished portion of this part of the project, you're going to see that there is a the above black cat apothecary because yeah, this is a little too low for my taste. But the black cat apothecary is not bad. Now I'm going to take some pavement. It is a slightly lighter black, so super deep gray, uh, apple barrel acrylic paint, and I'm just going to dry brush around the outside of the cat just to give it a little bit of dimension. Once that's done, I'm going to do just a little bit on the inside to try and make it look like my cat is furry. Then, taking some Mod Podge, I'm going to take that in one of those applesauce cups and a little bit of gold glitter from Dollar Tree and mix those up. For all my glitter haters out there, you might like this way of doing glitter. If you mix it with the Mod Podge, it doesn't get everywhere and it definitely doesn't shed when all is said and done. So I take my Mod Podge and add the glitter. I mix it up and I'm going to give the cat some bright, shiny, golden eyes. I think it needed a little bit of brightness on the side. You know, kind of, you know, spooky factor, maybe just a little bit. But I mean, you saw my cat. She's got the pretty bright yellow eyes and she's not spooky. But here you see, just taking a paintbrush and filling in uh, the little gold eyes. Next, I'm going to take a little bit more Mod Podge and I'm just going to coat over the top of the potion bottles, elixir bottles, tonic bottles, tincture bottles, medicine bottles, whatever you'd like to call them, and uh, just make them have just a slight gloss. This is matte Mod Podge, so nothing crazy out of the ordinary extraordinary. Just want it to look a little bit shiny. Now I'm going to take a bit more of the jet black paint and apparently I lost the footage of me drawing the line around the outside of the sign. I just wanted to give it some sort of depth and dimension so I put the line in but realized it was just too sharp and I wanted this to have a slightly homemade look to it. So I'm just freehanding over top of the original line to give it a little thickness and a little texture with my bumpy uh, not super steady handwriting. I'm going to take these two packs of Dollar Tree rub-ons. From the first one, I'm grabbing some numbers and the second one, the stars. And I'm going to cut out 19, six, or, I'm so sorry, 1693, which is the year the Salem Witch Trials ended. I just thought it was funny. It's my established time period. And then the stars to go around the Black Cat Apothecary. I know that the lettering is different, but it is what it is. That's what I got, and that's what I'm using. You could use stickers from like the Dollar Tree or Walmart if you wanted to have everything be the same uh, font-wise. But as I said, super big labor of love and didn't feel like going to the store to get some packs of stickers. Uh, as always, the rub-ons are super easy. I noticed when you're rubbing on the back of them, sometimes they will go slightly gray, and that lets me know, hey, it's time you can pull your paper because the uh, letter number graphic has adhered to your board. After I got those on there, I took some twine and just went around and tied a bit of it around the top of the potion bottles for a little more texture. You'll see I'm also going to grab my super duper amazing mind blowing tassel and bow jig, which is a few videos back, and use that to make a bow to uh, adorn my kitty cat with.
Once the twine was adhered, I got up to grab my lighter. And what a mistake on my part, this is what I returned to. Could you look at those little sharp claws and those big fingy teeth? Oh my goodness, this sign, that cat. Hmm. So I grabbed my lighter and I burned off all the little fuzzies. As you can see, I'm not setting my house down. You just wave the flame over it just a little bit and it burns the fuzzies right off. It doesn't even uh, like hurt your fingers as you can see here holding it. Just blow it out if the fire catches a little bit bigger than you'd like. Once all the fuzzies were burned off of the bow, I just used some hot glue and attached it to the cat's neck. Next, I took my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm just gonna dry brush over the lettering and lining on the sign. This is to make the letters of the sign match the worn look of the numbers from the rub-on transfers. I also took a little bit of the white chalk paint and dry brushed over the edges of the bottles to give them a more cohesive look, you know, going for that aged appearance. And finally for this sign, I took some Distress Oxide and a blender brush from the dollar, well, the blender brush is from Dollar Tree. The Distressed Oxide is from Hobby Lobby. Loaded up the brush and went around the edges of my sign just to continue on aging it just a little bit more. Uh, Melissa over at All Things Crafty YouTube channel is where I got this idea and it's excellent. Anywhere that the lines are too harsh, I'm just going to take a baby wipe and pull it down, smear it just a little bit. Uh, the dry, Distress Oxide works really well with water. And that's what I got for you today, guys. I hope you enjoyed our video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great week weekend, day, evening, whatever it is for you. Bye.